Hey everybody, welcome back to Metroid Fusion. This is gonna be part three, and I think we're heading into Area 5 now. Pretty sure. Of course, when are you not heading into Area 5 in this game? I'll tell you what. This is actually gonna be our first of three big trips here. The first to get something. Anyway. So this like first little area here. Okay, so here's the thing. It's really surprising sometimes how well hidden the right way to go is in this game. Like usually the hidden stuff is off to the side and you get like a missile or a power bomb or whatever. And it's like here, sometimes you have to find a really obscure passage through a wall or something just to move forward. So like once you learn where all that is, then it's actually a lot more fun. In that sense, I feel like this is one of those games where like the second or third playthrough is probably a lot more fun than the first is. Just gonna shoot down through here. See all these different walls we have to shoot through. And then here we have to run into this room so we can have room to build up our speed because we're gonna have to run through the ground. Of course, I guess, like, what you would normally do is just bomb over here, thinking you can go through the floor, see that it was speed blocks, and just work it out from there. So I guess that's not too hard of a puzzle. Or not too complicated, really. But there are just some parts of this game where I feel like, man, once you know what to do, it's like you do it three or four times faster just because you're not messing around, trying to figure out what you're surrounded by or anything. It's going to come down here, shoot through the floor, and go left here. Or like, that's a prime example right there. There's, like, four different ways to go there, and it's just, like... Man, I tell you. But again, like, once you know your way around, it's not so bad. I actually already attempted to record this segment once, but then I stupidly closed Audacity, my mic recording program, before I exported the file, so I had to do this all over again. So I'm doing it over. So, I wasn't playing that great on the last take anyway, though, so maybe we can do better this time, I don't know. Especially this room coming up here. This room here is kind of a pain in the butt, actually. It's probably a good idea to use your charge beam at least a little bit here. But then a lot of these monsters try to respawn. Holy crap. Okay, so underneath me there's like crumble blocks. You want to try not to fall there? Because you'll waste a lot of time there if you're like if that's what you're trying to do. But even if you're not trying to speed run, still getting knocked off. Ah, oh, jeez. It helps a lot if you also remember where those doors are so you get them before you come in the room. Anyway, so we're back in the main room, but only this time now we have the yellow doors open. But now we have to get back out, but we have to get up through those speed blocks. There we go. That was one where the door I actually remembered it was there. And here, we finally get the ice missiles. The ice missiles, good lord. Can you sound any more ambivalent about it? I don't know. So they come through here, and I'm gonna shoot through the floor again. Now I grab some missiles on the way here. Yeah, this place is kind of big. And a little bit... Labyrinthian. Like, I don't, I don't like using that word, because it feels too overzealous for what you're trying to describe. There's just a lot of ways to go. Hopefully, uh, sometimes you can get out of here before that block respawns. But, uh, there's like a thing in this game where even when you're picking up an item and the thing is up there saying you got whatever, it's still, like, time is still passing then, so if you plant a bomb and then pick up the item, the bomb will explode while it's popped up there saying that. This room is actually really interesting. So here we have to actually kill these monsters and then not pick up the X-Parasite that... X-Parasite? I think that's what they're called. <laughs> And then they spawn into something else, which makes it possible to get up here. I'm not gonna make that crap! Oh, that's not good. Now we gotta wait for this guy to get all the way down again. Ugh, okay, that's annoying. Man, makes me want to start over again here. No, that's okay, though. So the missile is actually up here in the ceiling, but you have to freeze these guys to get to it. Which means you have to kill them and not pick up the x side so they can respawn into something that you can freeze to get up there. It's quite complicated. As if that room weren't already hidden enough. Well, I guess that little indentation on the right is enough of a tell that there might be something there. It's always worth looking. That's Metroid for you, though. And then we have this room here. Once again, we're gonna have to kill stuff and then not pick up the X so that it can go and possess this little thing over here so we can freeze this. The reason we need to do that is so we have enough room to get up our speed to get through this wall in the next room. So many of these things, like your first time through, it feels like it would just take forever to figure out. But as you as you get to know the game better, it definitely makes more sense. I mean, there's only so much you're going to remember from one run to the next until you get it all. So I would say it probably takes about five or six runs of this game to actually really get to know it, or to at least map out a route that works for you. So I come through here and kill these wavers. Wavers are kind of surprisingly strong in this game. So once we have power bombs, we'll be able to just bomb across the bottom of this room instead of having to climb up and go over. So that'll be helpful, but not until our second trip. Also, we can't possibly not make note of Nightmare in the background. There's also a few power-ups up above us there, but we're not going to get those until later. 
Usually I wait all the space jump to get those. Crap, I always get hit by that guy. Yeah. So we had the little emergency procedure where you gotta run, gotta run, gotta run. And there's no timer yet, but there's about to be. So usually they save this for like the end of the game, so it's kind of cool that Fusion does it right smack dab in the middle of the game. And they've kind of been doing that since then, really, because if you look at Metroid Dread, they had that one mini-escape sequence from Kraid after you beat him, so that was really cool. So yeah, I like that they do stuff like this, though. It's just little moments where you kind of take yourself out into search and destroy mode and go into survival mode, like, no, I gotta get out of this place if it's the last thing I ever do. Head up the elevator, start the timer. Well, the timer's already started. I'm talking about start the timer. Then we get to go back to Area 3, because of course something's wrong in Area 3. There always is. We're always watching. Yeah, so, uh, yesterday, let me see. What did I do yesterday? I didn't do crap yesterday. I don't even remember. It's so bad when you think, oh my god, why well, I just trying to remember what you did. I don't know, like, I played some DQB2. Dragon Quest Builders, I uh, did some research and like watched some videos about it. Just gonna learn more stuff to do. So the more I get into that game, the more I feel like practicing. Like there's not really a point in practicing. There's more... To, it's more a game about learning what to do than it is practicing doing it. Because the execution is not the hard part, it's just knowing what to do. And what kind of crops grow where, or what kind of conditions you need for specific things. So we're actually gonna jump, jump down here. I always go the wrong way in this room for some reason, and if you do go the wrong way, well then <laughs> you're gonna waste a lot of time trying to get back out. So one time when I was doing, I think it was my third playthrough, you think I would have remembered by this point. My third playthrough, I came to this room and I saw that it was superheated, and I'm like, wait, I can't go this way. Because I forgot that I already had the various suit, so I turned around, went back up the room, and it took me forever to figure it out. I think by the time I got back here, I had like two minutes left. I still managed to finish it in time, but still. I'm gonna do a little diagonal ice missile in here to take care of these dudes. Some of these rooms can be a little tricky to navigate because you don't know whether you should like freeze the guys or destroy them. This room right here, I wish I hadn't destroyed that block there. There's like a block and you'd rather try and not destroy it if you can. Freeze this and then just jump through here like that. At least that's the best way I've seen to do it, but I'm sure there are better ways. I'm just, I haven't watched a lot of speedruns, just a few. Watch out for the crumble blocks there and just drop down here. This room, you want to freeze this guy and jump over pretty much always. There's no faster way to do that. If you fall in the lava, you're pretty much screwed, so. <laughs> oh god, okay. Gotta get through this if we can. No boobs? Yes, no boobs. Hell yeah, dude. Don't give me those boobs. It's main boiler central room. Yeah, so we made it. This is it. Pretty much this is where we wanted to go. Now we gotta kill off this thing before the timer runs out. Like, there's nothing worse than if you came here with like 15 seconds and then. You weren't able to get it in time because this guy takes so long to kill. I'm just not even bothering with trying to dodge because I know I'm going to get four energy tanks when I pick up the thing. Like, I'm talking faster than the thoughts can come to my head, or maybe vice versa. Now, I can't tell you how many times I've gotten the energy, or gotten the wide beam in this room, and then just left the room, completely forgetting to actually turn off the cooling unit, or turn it on. Cooling unit operational. <laughs> Like, why do you need a cooling unit in space? Just open the windows, you know? <laughs> yeah, anyway. I guess that wouldn't work either, because you'd lose all your oxygen. But anyway. See what you can learn in chemistry? It's amazing! Anyway. Gonna kill that thing right there, otherwise he kind of gets in the way. Whoops. No, no, one more level down. Try not to fall in the lava if we can. Like, sometimes I think actually running through the lava might be just about as quick as doing certain other things, like that one room later on, where you, um, where you're climbing up on the things above your head, where you're, like, arm wrestling the ceiling, or whatever you call it. <laughs> yeah, like this. Oh, well, shoot, here we go. I guess I get to demonstrate it now. <laughs> I don't know, it's not that much faster, and plus you're taking damage the whole time, so maybe not. It's probably not worth it. One thing I do miss from Super Metroid that's kind of not in this game is the whole, um, like, when you space jump, you actually go the same speed as your, like, horizontal speed as you had when you first started the space jump. But in this game, like, you can only space jump at, like, normal running speed. Unless you have the speed booster and you get up to the max speed, then you can do it. But then you're going so fast, it's like, holy crap. So we just went up to the top of that last room, and we're gonna cook through here. I guess I could've just gone through the door. I don't know. 
Well, since when am I known for thinking about what I'm doing? <laughs> Not that often, really. Uh, no, I don't need to go in that room yet. Let's get up here, get to the top, and get out. It's amazing, as many times as you come through this place, you still, still get lost, I tell you. So much of it kind of, like, it's not that it all looks the same, but stuff within a single room does, and sometimes the room next to it does too. Still, though, like, this is much better than Metroid 1, though. I'm not even trying to make that comparison, because I won't do it. I won't do it. So still got level 4 locks. We're not going to be opening those for a while. But, yeah, we'll get there soon enough. Just got to get through the text, because that's really annoying. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I get to go see the animals now, don't we? So we'll go see the animals, and then we'll just basically come right back to Area 5 again for our second trip there. But, getting too ahead of ourselves. Let's just take the elevator and go. And go. And win. So, hope everybody's having a lovely whatever this day is. Like, I think I'm probably, when I upload this, I'm just going to upload it six days in a row. Because I don't want to have, like, like when you're doing a run like this, it's like you want to just get it done. You know, you don't want to be having uploading it once every two days or whatever and having, like, Luigi Galaxy in between. So I'm thinking that'll, like, part one is probably going to go up on Wednesday, which means this will go up on Friday. That is, assuming I upload every day. Can't see any reason why I wouldn't. I was going through a spell there where it was kind of like I wasn't uploading every day. And every now and then I do take a Sunday off and don't upload on that day, but still. It's really surprising sometimes how hard it is to go down in this game. Um, <laughs> I'm trying not to make a stupid joke here, but yeah, like when you're when you're coming down through rooms like this where there's platforms all over the place, if you don't remember where the platforms are and you don't have like a route mapped out, it's really easy to forget. Especially at the bottom of that room where there's one little outcropping that goes all the way to the right side of the room, so you have to go around the right side of it. So if you're falling down, you're headed towards the left, it's going to be like, ugh. This room can be a little tricky to get to the top of, because you want to freeze this guy when he's sticking out, but if you freeze him all the way over there, you might not have enough space to get to this platform up here. I'm pretty sure I've made it before, but I'm not... Uh, let me see here. This room can be a little bit tricky to remember. Oh, shoot, I was supposed to shoot the wall. Yeah, you can do that, like, while you're getting up your speed, you can do it both at the same time, and that's ideally what you would do. So come over here and grab the missile tank here. There's no better time to get this, really. And now we have to jump through the left wall, so this is another one of those, you have to jump through this left wall here. Like, I think even my second or third time, I didn't remember what I was supposed to do there. Because there's very little of an indication that you can do anything there. There is some indication, so it's not like it's totally whatever. I guess a lot of this game just is learning to read the language of the world and try to interpret what the game's trying to tell you to do. So you can get really bad RNG with this, actually. I'm not sure what the like highest or lowest possible time is. That seemed to go by pretty fast there. But sometimes these animals take forever to come through the door, and you end up wasting a lot of time, but it's totally RNG. So you don't know, you can get screwed on a run real easy that way. People get killed that way. Well, what is that he says? And there's something about Mary. People get in trouble that way or something. This is a tasty burger. Hey, Samus is talking again. All right. I haven't heard from you in a while, Samus. I think this is the only time you ever see her in the various suit on the elevator like this. So the next time she talks isn't until after the gravity suit. Well, that's pretty cool. And she's talking about the animals. This is kind of like that obligatory moment of levity in the game. It's right here. See how this platform goes to the right here? If you're not mindful that that's coming up, you waste a lot of time trying to go down. So it's going down in rooms. It's surprising how hard that is to do. Because if you land and you got to wait for yourself to gather all the momentum from gravity or the acceleration from gravity, it's not like I'm giving a physics lesson here. Good lord. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. I'll just get me through the text. I'm assuming there is a randomizer at this game by now, but I haven't tried it yet. But I bet if there is, they must have taken out all the text here, I don't know. So I'll tell you what, man. So we're not going to that door on the left yet, because that's going to go to something else that we're going to see, actually, pretty soon here. We're just going to come at it from the other side, though. And then we're going to go a different way, rather than that door. So we come through here with the speed booster, there's a nice little missile pack waiting for you over here. These rooms with, like, this red lining on the walls, they always look so cool to me. We'll see more of that in a little bit here. But first, we gotta go get power bombs. 
they're not going to get through without the power bombs. Man, I can't believe I already have eight energy tanks. Like on most of my early runs when I was practicing this before I studied, like where everything was, I just wanted to study how to get through the game normally. So I would usually get to the end of the game with like 11 or 12 energy tanks, and I would struggle with it, because enemies do a lot of damage in this game. And I am not ignorant of that fact, although I guess I never claimed to be. I guess I never claim hooked to be. A little Aria of Sorrow reference there for you. So, going to the power bombs. See, in those other times I've come in here, made my second trip into Area 5 like we're doing right now, but then I went the same way that you're supposed to go on the first trip because I forgot which trip I was on. So, yeah. When they talk about, like, places in Metroid all looking similar, well, there's also the issue of, like, taking a similar path several times in a row. Shoot. Trying to get this missile pack up here before this side hopper thing gets me. Huh. It's one thing you will... Another thing you'll miss from this game, if you go back and play Super Metroid, is the ability to grab ledges. God, you don't know how nice that is until you don't have it. Like, if you need to grab a ledge and pull yourself up into, like, a morph ball, man, that is such a luxury. Especially if you're playing the Super Metroid Rotation hack. Good lord. Anyway. So this time we're going to remember to come through here, remember to shoot the door here, and then grab our power bombs. So this is the same data room that gave us the ice missiles a minute ago, so that's why it's kind of confusing, because you're going to the same room. You're just not going around and opening the yellow doors before you get there. So it's a little bit easy to get confused, but then here you pretty much do the same thing up until you get... Uh, all the way down here, and then right in this room, we're going to power bomb through the floor here. Power bombs in this game make a really loud sound. It's kind of... Well, I would say annoying. It's not really similar to that, but whatever. We're going to drop another bomb here. The SAX is going to be coming after us, but if you drop a power bomb right away, you can usually get away before she has a chance to nail you. Before it has a chance to nail you. Another power bomb here so we can grab this. And then when we come up into this room we were just in a minute ago, we're going to power bomb the ceiling here and get another one. This is another one where the ice missiles come in really handy. Oh, oh. as long as you don't miss, you know, because that can always happen. Oh, crap. Huh. There we go. Nice. We're going to make this. Ah, grabbing the ledges, man. <laughs> of course, there is the issue in this game, though. Of, like, like in Super Metroid, for example, right there, if you weren't able to grab the ledge, you could have just wall jumped to get back up there. But in this game, you couldn't do that, because when you wall jump against a wall away from it, it forces you away from the wall. So, like, there are ways to get around that, and, like, if you're underwater, I think, you can wall jump repeatedly against a single wall, but that can be... That can take some precision, let me tell you. So here we go again with this guy respawning here, and... Da -da 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 -da. Just don't fall, thank you, okay. Two good trips through that room, I'll take it. I don't think we ever have to go through that room again, so... I wouldn't worry about it. Shoot, there we go again, forgetting the door. As long as you're mindful of when those doors are coming, you can definitely save a lot of time from having to open those up. And that's the thing, though. So much of this is, like, me not remembering on a room-by-room -room basis. Like, once I get to a room, I know what to do, but I don't remember, like, which room is coming. As far as that goes, I've got, like, 400 hours in Celeste. I still don't know what room is coming half the time in that game. And I don't know if that's just an age thing or what. So this room is kind of annoying. It's got crumble blocks, and you have to use these... Well, you have to freeze the rippers here to actually get over the crumble blocks, which is very, very annoying. There's actually four of them here, so you want to hit them like in between the second and third ones and jump over these three right here and grab this. And at least we got it on the first try, so... thought I heard something downstairs. Jeez. I don't know. When you have when you live in a house like this, there's a lot of prone to... It's prone to make noises now and then, especially if the wind is blowing. The wind is not really blowing that much today. There's been other times, like, I'll turn on the washer, like, to do a load of laundry and forget that it's going, and then it makes a loud sound, and it just freaks me out. So you can see there, we power bombed across the bottom of- wait, what am I doing? Go back down. <laughs> we power bombed across the bottom of this room so we can get to the other side. Makes it a lot easier. So this is like another way you could go instead of jumping up in the big room. So we're still not going to get those power-ups up high in the big room just yet. Let's get out of this real quick. You can actually jump from that middle platform to the- to the grabby grabbies on the right from the bottom, so... Just one way to go a little bit quicker. Got another navigation room. Get some more toilet paper. I'm telling you, man. 
Where are we going? Oh, we're going back to the ship. Right. Okay, so this is where that happens. <laughs> that, I say. I think we'll probably stop once we get to the ship. Because, uh, there'll be just enough time, and then we'll have the epic nightmare fight in the next battle. Or in the next video, rather. I didn't even thought about, like, what I'd do for, for thumbnails in this series. Shouldn't be too hard to make something up, though. So at any rate, sometimes I get to a point in a video where I just want to stop and be like, Hey, so how's everybody doing? Yeah, like you could answer me or something. So shoot through the wall here. When the elevator breaks here, this is really cool. I like this section of the game, just the, the cinematics of it, you know, like stuff happens. A lot of times it's hard to do that in video games, to make stuff happen, make it feel like you're... I don't know. I don't want to say like you're watching a movie, even though that's kind of what it is. Whoops. I don't think I actually needed to come out of more fall to do that, but whatever. Let's lay another power bomb there so we can grab this. Hell yeah. So this is like that area I was talking about earlier with the red lining in the walls. It's like looks really cool. But you don't see any other area in the game that really looks like this, so. And you would think you have to speed boost through there, but nope. Grab the missiles here. There's nothing down there, so no point in going that way. So I come up through here, and here comes another room where we're going to have to go down, and that's going to be hard, because we're going to hit every platform on the way. We're going to grab a few from the side while we're at it. Oh, shoot, wait. Powerbomb here. I always forget to do this. There's a wall on the left there we're going to need to speed through later, and I don't want to have to stop and powerbomb and then run back the other way to get my speed up and then run the other way to get through it. So, yeah. There we are. We made it back to the ship. So let's have a little more dialogue, and then we should be good to go. Oh, well, I guess if you were gonna yawn in the video, this would be the time to do it right here at the end. Yeah, so all like the power's out and everything. It's not just the elevator stopping, like the power went out. That's the thing that happens to people. That's relatable. And you wouldn't think it would be that easy to find relatable stuff in a Metroid game. Speaking of relatable, check out the animals. <laughs> I love the animals. All right, next time on Metroid Fusion Nightmare. See you later.